Welcome everybody. Now that I have a little bit of downtime in between the autocrosses, for a while there, you know, I was going to a lot of autocrosses, back to back, had a lot of travel going on, so I didn't really have time to really update on things on the car. I just needed to get things fixed and kind of go. But now that we got a little bit of downtime, I will go over some of those. And the first one being the steering. So I get a lot of questions uh, asking about the electric power steering that I put on the car. So quick uh, recap in case you haven't seen those videos. I put uh, a Prius second gen. So like the 05 to 09, I believe, uh, uh, Prius steering columns on the car, which then got rid of all the hydraulics on the, the front. So it did uh, lighten everything up and then kind of moved the weight uh, back into the cab, which is all kind of nice. But I had a lot of problems kind of dealing with with that, that it just wasn't uh, working to, to my liking. Uh, I think I got it pretty good. Uh, I haven't really even noticed it at the last couple events. Things are working really, really well with it. Uh, so I think it's finally to, to a good working condition. So we're gonna go over some of the updates, changes, and issues uh, that I found with, that, uh, with the steering unit. So let's jump into it. With the Prius steering column, I put in an aftermarket uh, controller from Inductive Auto Works. And I've been talking to with the manufacturer about it a little bit of what issues I've seen. And there was some inconsistencies in what the controller was, what the Prius controller, the Toyota controller was sent in to the power steering controller. So kind of led me to go pick up another uh, ECU. So this was really easy to grab from another Prius and I swapped that in there and then also uh, took it off to kind of look at it. So in here, this is the one that came out of it. There is a burnt section on there. Not really sure if that will show up on camera, but uh, there is a little burnt section of the control board. And that was caused by me. Uh, for this uh, casing, I had cut off these brackets and kind of welded on new ones to make it kind of work in the car. And in my laziness, I didn't take this off of uh, the ECU. I didn't really realize how close the control board was to the, to the actual casing. So in my welding, which I was trying to just do little tacks, but one of the tacks did go uh, kind of through and burnt up the board or burnt a section on the board. Did it actually cause any damage? Because I mean, the, the power steering still worked, but there were some uh, inconsistencies that were kind of going on. So yeah, that's uh, one issue found and solved. So I put in a new uh, ECU and things are seeming to go pretty, pretty well with that. So this is the part number for the ECU in case anybody uh, needs ones or looking at them. So that's the one for the second gen Toyota Prius. So the next changes that I did on the power steering control unit was the inputs. So I was trying to use like the ABS speed sensors to be able to do like a speed versus power assist uh, graph that it's able to do, but uh, there might be some issues possibly in the software that's not really allowing that to work out too well. Uh, they did recommend maybe trying out uh, a, a third gen Prius unit. So I am gonna start looking for that and see how easy that would be to put into the system. Uh, newer is a lot of times uh, better, but the second gens are just super easy to find in the junkyard right now. But anyways, the change that I did, instead of using the ABS sensors, I put in a potentiometer uh, input. So long watchers probably know that I have this uh, potentiometer on the dash. This was for the race TCS, the traction control unit that I used to have in the car that I no longer have in there because of uh, some other issues and changing of the ECU and things like that. But anyways, I have the, this uh, potentiometer already in here. So I wired this into the controller, which is basically underneath here, also where the traction control unit used to be. So right in here, we have the Ductive Auto Works power steering controller. And we have this uh, potentiometer, so it's just a dial that we can turn on there and dial up different percentages of uh, power assist. So I think we can we can go all the way down to basically like 
the lowest percentage, which I think is like 10, and then all the way up to like 95% uh, power assist on there. Uh, another thing that I had wired in, but found out afterwards that it doesn't really work, is this red little light. So that was wired into the error on the controller. So whenever there was an error in the, the code or error with the unit, it would turn on this red light. But I've been told by the, the company that that does not work right now. There's a, a change that they, they need to fix in the, the software. So hopefully a new firmware comes out for that and we can get some of that stuff actually fixed. But I was really concerned about that for a long time because I thought it was telling me that there was an error going on and that's why things weren't working. But turns out it's just a, a software bug. So we'll get that uh, hopefully solved at some point, but it is a little annoying. But most of the time I have the tablet in here, so I don't even see the red light. Uh, some other wiring uh, improvements that I've done in here, if it will show up too much, I'm not sure, but I've changed the CAN wiring that goes from this unit to the ECU. So I did do like a twisted pair before uh, which is what you're supposed to do for CAN, but I've since ripped that all that out and put in shielded wire. So I now have a properly twisted pair shielded wire that runs from the controller to the ECU. I also did some uh, troubleshooting and found out that there wasn't termination resistors on both sides as there is supposed to be on CAN. Like, yeah, this run is very short, but you should have termination resistors on uh, a CAN network. So uh, there was a termination resistor, if I remember correctly, in the power steering controller unit, but there was not one in the Toyota ECU. So I've added a, a 120 ohm resistor at the Toyota ECU to be able to complete that uh, circuit. Did some wiring a little bit underneath the dash as well, but I'm not gonna kind of pull this all out because it's honestly a little bit of a mess underneath there. But um, I do have the no nice uh, Deutsch connectors, which made it really easy to do all the wiring. I also had wired up the OBD2. I could then take an OBD2 reader and read and see if there were any error messages on the Toyota uh, steering ECU. And sure enough, it was saying that it couldn't see the ABS. So the steering, the Toyota steering controller gets its speed and other signals probably from the Toyota ABS, which I obviously don't have, but this uh, power steering controller unit is supposed to kind of simulate those things. But I was still seeing that I was getting a fault for those. So I was thinking that that was causing the ECU to kind of go into fail safe mode. They kind of told me that if if the CAN sees any other signals, basically from like the handheld reader, that it could go into fail safe mode. But uh, that fault is a little concerning that it is uh, giving like a, that the, it says that the ECU is going into fail safe, but it's hard to tell if it's only when I have the code reader hooked up to it that it's going to fail safe or it's going to fail safe all the time. There's no way to really know, but it seems like things are working and when I'm driving the, the steering does feel really good and I do notice uh, differences in the steering as I turn the assist up or down. I'll throw up the schematic that I made up for the power steering controller in case it's useful for anybody else. I still do have the ABS signals kind of going into it. Hopefully I'll be able to use those uh, someday, but for right now we are using just the potentiometer going in there. And then there's a few other inputs or outputs that might not really be working at the moment. The other thing that I needed to do for the column that I wasn't able to do in the original steering uh, video was do the turn signals and hazard lights and all that things. So all it is is just a plate with uh, basically this is from uh, Lowe's for like holding up a conduit. I put a little bit of a heat shrink on it to help it uh, grip up and it doesn't actually rotate or anything, which is quite nice, uh, but it all works as, as it should. Uh, I did find out that without that actually connected in there, the taillights on the car don't work. So the taillights go through, I believe the, the hazard lights in order for them to actually work. But we do have the factory Mustang turn signal switch all on there now. So we do have like the wipers, turn signal, high beams, hazards, all that stuff is on there and is working now. So that is quite nice. 
All right, so that concludes the update for the electric power steering column from the Toyota Prius and the updates that I've done to try to get everything to work correctly. I think it all is going really, really well now. It takes a little bit of a growing pains and all. I'm still kind of tweaking with the percentage right now. I'm running around 50% uh, power assist. So it's really not that much more than the fail safe. The fail safe is 40% from what I've heard and I'm running only like 50%, it seems to be is where I feel that it's giving a good, a good feel to the car. Anything more, it gets like too light at the higher speeds and anything too much lower, it's uh, heavy at that uh, low speed kind of stuff. So that's why I really wanted to be able to do the, the speed based uh, graph of power assist. So at the uh, lower speeds, I can give higher power assist and as the speeds increase, I can get rid of it. Uh, so this is just an autocross car. If you're on track and you're going much higher speeds, you might want to try the, the lower power assist because I mean, you're not really going to be using any low speed stuff like we are for autocross where we're getting down to 20 miles an hour and then up to 60. So the fail safe power assist might actually be pretty perfect for what you need, or it might still be a little too much. You might need a little bit less, but I am really happy with how it's uh, turning out at the moment and the benefits that it is uh, providing for me. So, thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next video. Later.